It's time for today's travel and cruise industry news. With the latest from travel and cruises around the world, here's your host, Chili Falls. Okay, folks, I have no idea if any of you will be able to come back to this uh, complete disaster this morning. <laughs> that is travel and cruise industry news for the day. Um, I had to completely go out, cancel the show out, which was had already Facebook had canceled me out because I was late. Uh, and I'll explain why in just a moment. Uh, but that happened while it was late. And then um, it completely uh, cut me off. So I had no sound. And every time I said sound, I'd get a message that says that I was uh, on a browser, I disconnected from my browser. Emily's with me and Emily, I assume you can hear me and we're back to normal. I just don't know if anybody else is will be able to find me. So I'm going to go on like normal um, and I will give an explanation of what happened. And then I'm just going to do a show like uh, I would always. So, and that'll go up and somebody can go back and check it as a, a video uh, in a few minutes. So anyway, so what happened this morning, folks, I had a, a, a pulmonary PT assessment. It was supposed to last from 30 to 45 minutes. I was very explicit that I had an 11 o'clock that I had to be back home for, and it's about a 20-minute drive. They said, oh, no, we'll be done in 30 to 45 minutes. I was there an hour and 20 minutes. So I didn't even leave until like 10 minutes to 11, and that's all the way on the other side of Lynchburg. So it's a good, healthy 20-minute drive. So it was after 10 minutes after when I got home and then I have to get the oxygen tank out of the truck and into the house and switch it to the permanent oxygen inside and get over here and get everything fired up again. And then I go on and by then Facebook has canceled it out and uh, whatever that did, it must've done something to the audio because I could get, I was back live. I was on live. I knew that, but I had no audio. So I have no idea what caused it. Sorry about that. Sorry about the screw up from, from the pulmonary PT this morning. Uh, sometimes that happens when you have medical issues and you're dealing with uh, live uh, uh, stuff. So uh, anyway, uh, Emily, I'm glad that you did make your way back into the broadcast. Maybe some of the other folks will uh, because I don't have time to send them all messages now. So I'm going to go on with the show just like normal. My lead story this morning, folks, was Virgin changes schedules again. And that's, that's not being uh, politically incorrect and kinky, folks. Uh, the Valent Lady is to debut in the UK now. Now, the Scarlet Lady, um, which is, of course, uh, Miami Cruises, uh, have been delayed now until October. That's like the sixth time that Virgin Voyages has had to delay or reschedule the Scarlet Lady. The Scarlet Lady is going to start off sailing from Portsmouth, UK until October when it's going to sail out of Miami. The second Virgin Voyage ship, the Valent Lady, is to follow in the wake of her older sister and make her debut in the UK. Between March 18th and May 14th, 2022, the new ship will offer a series of three-night cruises to Zebrugge, on the Belgian coast, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, Zeebrugge, I think it is, on the Belgian coast, as well as 11 night voyages to the Canary Islands, 12 nighters to Spain and Portugal. The cruises, which, and I see Katie's with me too. Hey, Katie. Uh, the, that's the, uh, the Valent Lady. Uh, the cruises go on sale on July 21st. We'll offer late nights or overnights in ports such as Santa Cruz and Tenerife the Portuguese capital of Lisbon, the Spanish resorts of Malaga and Palma de Mallorca. The Valent Lady will then head to Barcelona to sail the Mediterranean during the summer. So the news was announced after Virgin Voyages canceled the Miami sailings of the Scarlet Lady until October. Virgin's first ship is now scheduled to make its long-anticipated Miami debut on October 6th, 18 months behind the original schedule. And these poor guys have been, uh, you know, and they're so nice. Uh, I, I've loved dealing with them, 
but they have just been totally, totally screwed and trying to get their business off the ground. They still have not had a sailing with a paid passenger. And we're 18 months in since they took delivery of the first ship, the Scarlet Lady, and had the first uh, sailing with all the, the uh, uh, media people on board. So anyway, if the uh, October sailings around the UK go well, uh, a series of six night sailings in August along the UK coastline from Portsmouth, those trips will be available exclusively to the UK residents as it stands now. The line also announced a six month delay in launching the second ship, the Valent Lady. So it's six months behind schedule already. It was delivered to Virgin last week at the Fincantieri shipyard in Italy. Uh, all Valent Lady sailings previously scheduled to depart between November 14th and May the 1st have been canceled. A third adults only ship, Resilient Lady, is due to sail to the Greek islands in the Adriatic coast from next summer. Uh, and a fourth member of the fleet is also on order. The near identical ships will each offer more than 20 dining venues, as well as innovative entertainment, all restaurants, group fitness, Wi-Fi access and tips are included in the fare. So uh, the Valent Lady, again, the Valent, uh, the Virgin Voyages, the Scarlet Lady and the Valent Lady have all been delayed. Uh, so now we're looking at some summertime cruises for the Scarlet Lady around the UK and then the Valent Lady coming in later. So, all right. Yesterday marked Carnival's uh, sailing into Half Moon K on the, the uh, Carnival Horizon. And it arrived at Half Moon K, the private island, um, yesterday morning. It's the first ship to visit the usually posh, popular destination since the pandemic paralyzed the cruise industry last March. The 24 acre Bahamian island is consistently rated by guests as one of the most popular Carnival destinations. In fact, Porthole Cruise Magazine's reader have voted Half Moon Key the industry's best private island for a remarkable 20 straight years. Half Moon's powdery white sand, warm turquoise waters, and laid back ambiance create a perfect sunny playground for guests of all ages. There are two miles of glorious beachfront, hundreds of free lounge chairs, a natural 700 acre lagoon, private cabanas, and two story villas available for rent, a children's water park, and fun-filled shore excursions with activities including cycling, snorkeling, kayaking, and stingray encounters. And of course, it is you do have to uh, tender in at Half Moon Key. I've been to Half Moon Key, and they wouldn't, uh, because of my scooter situation, uh, that day they would not let me tender in. So I didn't get to go into shore. Uh, there's more fun to come at Half Moon K in the future. In 2019, Carnival Corporation signed an agreement with the Bahamas government for a new $80 million, million development to serve Carnival Cruise Line ships. It will include a docking pier able to accommodate the largest ship like the Mardi Gras, the new LNG-powered Mardi Gras. Uh, even with the planned expansion, new and existing facilities will account for only about 10% of the island's land, leaving the remainder to the birds and other wildlife. Carnival Horizon currently sailing the first Carnival cruise from Florida uh, port in the fast, past uh, 15 months. We'll spend two days at Half Moon Key on the six-night itinerary, which also included a stop at Amber Cove in the Dominican Republic. They had planned on a visit to Bimini, but that was canceled due to COVID issues. So they're getting an extra night, uh, an extra day staying at Half Moon Key. And the same day that uh, the, the uh, Carnival Horizon went into a Half Moon Key, the Carnival Vista, which sailed out of Galveston, of course, became the first uh, ship to be welcomed to Belize in 16 months. As part of the resumption of cruise operations, Carnival Cruise Line continues to return ports for the first time since suspension first started in March 2020. This includes Carnival Vista making a visit to Belize for the first time, 
Passengers enjoyed the port to boost the local economy. Carnival Vista, of course, is sailing its first voyage back after departing Galveston on July the 3rd. The ship arrived just off the coast of Belize City around 8 o'clock Wednesday, and guests were able to enjoy a lot of the day on tours or just experiencing the Fort Street Tourism Village. And I hope you can hear me. That is uh, uh, the Tourism Village. And let's see if we can pull up the uh, video. That's that's folks landing. I hope you can hear me through this. Sometimes the video cut my uh, mute me off, but uh, I don't think this is. Uh, that's a little clip, but of course that's the the uh, ship out at sea, uh, and that's the folks landing at uh, Belize for the first time. Um, over the coming months, even more cruise ships will be making a return to Belize, as well as many other Caribbean cruise destinations. The Carnival Vista uh, also visited the Mahogany Bay at Rotan and Honduras the day before, uh, and will visit Cajamel um, before returning to Galveston on the 10th. So that's the uh, latest news from Carnival. Princess uh, Cruise Line also has announced and I'm not sure if this was yesterday, I believe, uh, because my schedule has been so up and down this week. Uh, Princess Cruise has announced the onboard dining offerings that will be available on the Majestic Princess uh, Alaska itineraries this summer. The ship is set to operate seven-night cruises from Seattle starting the 25th of July and running through September 26th. And I know a couple of you guys that regularly watch me uh, are 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 booked on the the uh, uh, majestic uh, majestic princess uh, for Alaska cruises this year. Uh, so all dining venues across the ship will be open. With the ocean now, passengers will have full control and flexibility when it comes to eating on board, including making dine my way reservations and ordering food, drinks, and more to be delivered to the exact location on the ship. Allegro Concerto and Symphony main dining rooms will serve multi-course meals each night that are freshly prepared by the Princess Culinary Team. Alaska seafood, uh, popular family favorites, and decadent desserts will all be on the menu. The World Fresh Marketplace is essentially the ship's buffet and will feature food stations such as Eat East meets West street food counter serving comfort foods like French crepes, Asian noodles, German sausages, Japanese satays, and freshly made breads and pastries. Majestic Princess features a variety of specialty restaurants, including Chinese restaurant Harmony, created in partnership with Chef Richard Chin, the French bistro style bistro Sur La Mer, created by Chef Emmanuel Renault and Crown Grill Steakhouse with many items specific to Alaska sailings. International Cafe, of course, is their answer to uh, Starbucks. will be open 24 hours a day, serving a rotating variety of small bite meals, treats, gourmet coffee, and tea. Alfredo's Pizzeria voted the best pizza at sea by USA Today. Uh, this sit-down venue offers a menu of fresh individual-sized pizza, along with beer and wine by the glass. Chopsticks Noodle Bar serves freshly prepared noodles, soups, and classic wok-style noodle dishes for the perfect light meal. So, uh, Bonnie and some of you guys that are going on Princess uh, in Alaska, I think you'll have plenty to eat. I promise you. So, that's, uh, that's all I've got for today, guys. Again, I apologize for all of the screw-up this morning. That was not my intent. Uh, had they done what they were supposed to do, I would have easily been home by, you know, uh, 1030 at the latest. I had plenty of time to get ready for the show. I mean, at least I had the show set and ready to go when I ran in the house. All right, let's see if anybody has come in and joined us. Hey, Nick, Katie made it. Emily made it. Nikki made it. Are we live now? Yes, we are, Nikki, if you are still there. 
How was my appointment? Actually, the appointment, it just went longer than it was supposed to. It was an assessment. I am going to start doing uh, pulmonary PT, which is uh, purely exercises, walking, uh, biking, uh, doing all kinds of sh just shit on, excuse my French, on the machines um, three days a week uh, for, I think I got 36 uh, sessions that, um, that, that has been approved by Medicare. So, uh, three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. It's one o'clock after the show, folks. We won't have this screw up again. It's not going to be in the morning. It's going to be after I go. The, I'll, I'll get off the show and jump in a truck and go go to PT, um, and then come back home and get in the pool. But anyway, that's uh, that's what's going to be. So it went fine. It just went way longer than than uh, than it was supposed to be. I mean, they asked me eight bazillion questions, and which that's fine. And maybe I'm too wordy an answer. I just should have said yes or no to everything. But, um, but anyway, it went well. I like the guy, the, 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 the therapist, um, his name is Brian and, uh, uh, very comfortable with him. They, they put me through the paces. I had to do some walking. I had to do some speed walking. I had to do some, uh, 30 seconds of arm curls and they counted to see how many I could do and all these, these flexibility things that, and measure how much I couldn't do them. Uh, so it was, uh, it was all that kind of stuff for the evaluation. And they think that, uh, you know, in time that maybe I can get a little better, which, uh, yeah, that would be nice. Uh, for those of you that have followed along on this, I am down to 3.0 on the oxygen. Now I've got everything the the, the in-house system. And when I'm on the tank outside, I uh, set at 3.0 now. Uh, which, you know, I've got to get it under 3.0. Uh, that's three liters per whatever, however it's measured. Uh, I have to get under that before I can get one of those little nifty carry bags that you see that looks so neat on somebody's shoulder that uh, is an oxygen ox the creator thing. Uh, but it, it, it can't do it at the amount of oxygen I require. So that part sucks. So, but I have to get to, down to, to two. And the, the other thing that uh, they've told me is uh, keep losing weight and that'll help. Yeah, well, I know that. I still have about, uh, I don't know, 15 pounds to go before I can go back to the uh, orthopedic guy and say, okay, now it's time to, to fix the knee, replace the knee. That's the next thing that I need to do um, uh, is have my knee replaced. Um but at least now I'm working on that. Hopefully you can get off oxygen completely. Jason says, yep, I hope so too, Jason. Um, that, oh boy, that would be wonderful. You know, I can live with the other end of you know, the catheter business. Um, but boy, it would be nice to get off the oxygen. But my problem is when I do any exertion at all, um, I mean, I, I, I'm gasping for breath. My oxygen level goes from, you know, it's normally 92, 93, 94. It'll go down to 78, 76. And I'm huffing and puffing for, but it comes back in a couple minutes. So anyway, uh, Emily says she's seen those um, uh, nifty portable oxygen cases. They look very handy and easy to go around. Yeah. But the problem is yeah, if, uh, those are most of those are pulse oxygen as opposed to steady flow. I have to have steady flow. Um, and right now it's at three liters. You can get a steady flow at two liters and those nifty little, uh, little things. And they're good for about eight hours and then they have to be recharged. Did they give me breathing exercises? Yes. Um, uh, four, four and eight, they called it where I'm supposed to, breathe in through my nose for four seconds and exhale through my mouth, blowing out a candle for eight seconds, four and eight in through my nose for four out. Like I'm blowing out a candle for eight and try to work up to that. So that's the main exercise that they have me doing. Hopefully you can uh, get up. I'm seeing them. Uh, let's see what else is here. Um, 
Oh, Emily's about to make some cinnamon rolls. Okay, you guys got hungry with me talking about Princess Dining. And that was for uh, Bonnie, and Bonnie's not even here. So anyway, all right, guys, that's going to wrap me up. To, I promise tomorrow, of course, tomorrow's Saturday, and about half of you guys won't be here. Katie, by the way, how's your uh, weather up there? Uh, I wasn't even thinking about this silly-ass weather. We ended up, it ended up being a total non-event here. Uh, it was absolutely, um, we had the one little uh, rumble of thunder and a hard shower when I was on the air yesterday. And then we've had probably less than uh, maybe a tenth of an inch uh, through the rest of the day yesterday, last night. And it was raining lightly this morning when I left to go across town to go to the, uh, to pulmonary rehab. Uh, so uh, it was a non-event here. Now, Tom over in Richmond got, they got hit pretty hard, uh, which I was hoping Tom would be here. He probably was earlier, uh, but, uh, it looked like Richmond, Norfolk, Virginia beach. They were getting smacked pretty hard yesterday afternoon and into last evening. Uh, Katie says it's windy and rain here, but not bad. Good. Well, I'm glad it's calmed down by the time, time I got up there. All right, guys, that's going to wrap me up for today. I will be back tomorrow. If you're new to this channel, uh, I try not to screw days up like I did today. Uh, but huh, who knows? Never know. I'll screw it up if I can. Uh, anyway, join us 11 o'clock Monday through Saturday. Um, uh, for travel and cruise industry news. And don't forget Sunday, Cruise Amigos. This week, our guest is Donna and Michael Philippus, who were on the Viking Sky as it circumvented Iceland and had, I think, six ports of call on Iceland. And the photographs that I have for Sunday's show are fabulous uh, from Iceland. And I know nothing about Iceland. So I'm really looking forward to that. That'll be Sunday at 2 o'clock Eastern uh, Daylight Time. That's 1 o'clock Central Daylight Time. And that is 7 o'clock London Time for you folks on the other side of the pond. But join us for the Cruise Amigos live from London on Sunday as we're going to talk about Iceland. So that's it for today. I'll see everybody tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock. Later, y'all. I regularly post videos on all facets of the travel and cruise industry. So if you like to keep up with the latest in cruise ships, ports of call, cruises themselves, chilly chats, and travel and cruise industry news, just hit the little subscribe button in the lower right-hand corner. Hit the bell notification so you'll be notified when a new video is up or we go live. This video was produced by Chili's Cruises.